Tom and I know a lot about, it's podcasting. I mean, between the two of us, we have close to about a dozen different podcasts. So we figured this is the perfect time to answer all those questions about podcasting we've been receiving and do Tom and Veronica's Beginner's Guide to Podcasting. Now, we'll assume you already have a topic in mind, so let's start off with the hardware. Yeah, you need some stuff to actually record this on. Uh, so the easiest thing to do is grab a headset, something like this. I uh, actually don't recommend this one. This is mine, Plantronics. It does the Cyloning effect. Uh, but you can find headsets like this for less than $100. Plug in by USB to whatever computer you have now. Instant ability to record podcasts. However, if you want to have more than one person on your computer at a time, you want to get a little fancier, you might want to pick up a USB mixer. That's what I did. Uh, you can get some really cheap ones, 30 or 40 bucks, but they will break, I promise you. Uh, the one that I use that has been with me for a couple years now and I love is the Alesis Multimix 8 USB model. That allows you to have several inputs. you got four mic inputs, but you also have aux inputs. Uh, I actually plug a computer into the tape input so I can do separate sound effects from the computer I'm recording on. And it just gives you a whole lot more flexibility. Uh, and then, of course, you need a microphone if you're going to use a mixer. Uh, the cheapest way to go is the Shure PG48. It's about 30 bucks. It's a really good quality, inexpensive mic. A lot of bands use that, so it's got really good sound for cheap. Uh, if after a while you're like, no, I want to get something that sounds awesome, I use a Heil PR40. It's much more expensive, but for the quality, it's actually a good buy, and it just sounds great. Then, of course, you're going to need some podcasting software to record, mix, and normalize audio. Um, we both use Audacity. You can get it for free at audacity.sourceforge.net. And then something we both use and love, love, love is Levelator. And you can find that at conversationsnetwork.org slash levelator. And that's just great to, to kind of balance out everyone's audio. If you've got a bunch of different people talking, it'll just nice and levelate Especially it all Especially at out. the start, it's going to be hard to figure out all those levels, and somebody's going to end up soft, or mm -hmm. somebody on Skype's going to sound weird, and it just takes all of that and does it for you. It's perfect. And then, of course, Skype at www.skype.com. You can use that if you need to record someone who's not in the room with you or do some interviews, something like that. You're probably familiar with Skype, but it is a good tool to use for podcasting. Um, Audio Hijack is another app that we just love. It's free to try, and it's $32 to keep, and you can find that at rogamoeba.com slash audio hijack or a wiretap studio. You can also do a free trial, or it's $69 to keep. We've tried both of those, and I think I think my favorite is probably, probably Audio Hijack. Now, see, my favorite it's wiretap because huh. I've had better luck, but it all depends on your system and which one you have. The, the key to those, though, is you need those to record Skype because Skype doesn't record itself. You can actually use them to record any audio that's happening on your computer at any given moment. So if you've got Skype running or if you have a sound file that you want to play from Safari or from Internet Explorer, you can pipe it through that way. So it's great if you want to add effects or things live in stream. For uploading and hosting, uh, we both use archive.org occasionally. You can use hosted services to pay if you want to. You're probably going to get more features for the paid services, but archive is free and things will live up there forever. But you have to put it under a Creative Commons license. That's one thing that you have to realize, right? No, you can you can choose to have a you copyright. Can do a full copyright yeah, you can, license you can as choose well. your full copyright up there. They just want to have everything in the world on archive.org. That's why they'll provide that for free. Now, once you have it up there, you need to put it out in a feed so you can hand code your XML yourself, or I, I don't recommend doing that because you will make <laughs> mistakes. We used to do buzz out loud that oh, way. Do you remember? Oh, I remember that. Uh, so I would yes. say get a, uh, an RSV distribution or syndication uh, platform like FeedBurner, feedburner.google.com. Uh, it allows you to put your files up on a blog, and then it will create the RSS feed from that for you. Uh, if you want to step it up a little bit and get a few more features, there's something called Libsyn. It's L-I-B-S-Y-N. It actually combines storage and feed management. So it'll host the files for you and create the feed. Uh, and you get advanced management features like QuickCast, which as soon as you upload the file, it immediately puts it in the feed for you. That's kind of nice. Or FutureCast, which allows you to publish in the future. So if you've got some time-sensitive content, uh, you can put that in there. Of course, Libsyn does cost money. So if you want to go the cheap route, go FeedBurner. Now, if you're curious about how many people are listening or watching your show, uh, you can check out something like PodTrack. It's tracking and possibly advertising as well. You just put a little link in front of the file that you're hosting, and it'll automatically track the number of downloads that you're getting. And then you get all sorts of nice stats and features with that. And then, of course, you need some promotion. You need to get the word out about your podcast. You can always have guests. You can link out to topics. You can put it up in iTunes. Anything you can think of that can get more earballs. 
on your show. Get those earballs. Get those earballs on your podcast. <laughs> no, I mean, that, that is the thing a lot of people forget about, right? Which is you need to tell people about it afterward. And that, that sometimes is the hardest part, is how do you get the word out about that? So just be creative. Come up with as many different ways of getting it out. And guests that you mentioned, I think, is one of the best ways. Because Definitely. then they tell people about it. Yeah. And hopefully they have a large Twitter following that will tweet out the link after it happens. Get Veronica on. <laughs> now, again, this is just an overview of the things that you need to ensure a successful podcast. I will put the links in the show notes for all the tools that we mentioned. And if you think that you have an awesome podcast studio, send us in a pic of your setup to Texola at revision3.com.